Hello everyone from sunny Los Angeles, this is Tom and this is the first video of a series I am going to dedicate to Italian literature. I'm not going to follow a specific order, but uh, I'll try to highlight some books that are considered Italian masterworks. And uh, in about 700 years of Italian literature, uh, many masterworks have been, have been written. Today I'm going to talk about Christ Stop at Eboli. This is by Carlo Levi, published in uh, uh, 1945. This is the Italian edition, but I'm going to show the English one as well. Um, personally, I was a little amazed to have missed this book um, during my school years because it's such a masterwork. And uh, obviously, mm, in the Italian schools, they tend to show a, a predetermined number of uh, Italian books uh, down your throat. And, and in my case, this was not one of them or at least I don't remember if it was, but uh, it certainly deserves to be included and uh, I particularly love it, so I, I decided to, to start with this. So today in this video I'm going to I'm try to do this. I'm going to talk about the historical background, which is very important for, for this book, uh, a little bit of spoiler-free synopsis, and a social and political commentary about the, the context. So. Carlo Levi was a doctor, a writer, and a painter, and he was a native of Turin, Torino. In 1935, his anti-fascist beliefs and activism led to his banishment by Mussolini's fascist government to a period of internal exile within Italy, in a remote region um, of the South. This book is his recollection of one of those uh, three years that he spent in exile over there. The uh, title of the book comes from an expression by the people of Gagliano, which is this little village, who say of themselves, Christ stopped short of here at Eboli, which means basically that they feel they've been bypassed by Christianity, not only by Christianity, but by morality, by history itself, that they have somehow been excluded from the full human experience. Levi explained that Eboli, in a location in the region of Campania, to near to the uh, sea coast is where the road and railway to Basilicata, which is another region, branched away from the coastal north-south um, routes. So the, the village of Galliano is a very small, isolated, extremely poor uh, little village, and it was ridden with misery. It lacked basic goods because there were no shops in the village. Um, a typical diet consisted of uh, bread, oil, crushed tomatoes, peppers, and that was it. The villages did not have any mm, modern items. Uh, those that did were really not utilized. The one public toilet was in the town was a single one, and it didn't have any running water, uh, and it stood as a retreat for animals rather than people. Also, only one car was found in that area. Homes were very sparsely furnished, and the most frequent decoration consisted of uh, uh, and this is very curious, a photo or a picture of the Madonna and a photo of the American president, Roosevelt. Um, that's because um, America, for many Southern Italians in those times, was something that represented paradise or heaven. And uh, some of them um, came back from America uh, only to live their, the rest of their lives in regret because they had come back. So the situation was really peculiar. Healthcare was a complete disaster. The two doctors in town were invariably inept. The peasants uh, simply did not trust the in-town physicians and therefore relied on uh, uh, Primo, uh, Carlo Levi's uh, medical skills instead of, um, of the doctors. And uh, his having not practiced in many years um, was really made him reluctant to help them. They had malaria, they had many different illnesses. Education was available, but as Levy stated, stated, the mayor who taught class, he spent more time smoking on the balcony rather than educating the children. Religion. The religious values of the villages that Levy visited were a mixture of Catholicism and mysticism. While the people were uh, religious in the sense that they were moral and kind and spiritual, they were motivated more by beliefs in magic and mysticism than actual religion. Um, they rarely attended church, and in fact they didn't like the priest, who was a drunk and whose reputation had been ruined while he was still young for, 
for having sexual relations with a young student. Uh, the priest, however, had just as much dislike for the people himself, and as evident by his statement that the people are um, the people here are donkeys, not Christians. So all in all, it seems like Christianity was not fully embraced in this town, and this is shown by the multitude of priests uh, begetting illegitimate, illegitimate children and uh, um, all the illegitimate behaviors they had. Superstitions, um, fairies, gnomes and spells seem to shape the day-to-day -day tasks much more than Christ and the belief in God. Belief in God. Uh, people did, however, attend um, church on holidays, like for example Christmas, so it was a mix between Christianity and this mystic, pagan, ancient culture. Uh, Christianity was an idea that was introduced but never fully adopted. So what about the synopsis, the content? Um, in fact, what could have been a really dreadfully boring memoir becomes a beautiful poetic work of art uh, under the artistic sensitivity of Mr. Levy's pen. What gives the book a true soul, and in my opinion really elevates it to the level of a real masterwork, is the deep heartfelt sense of longing and love that Levy has for the people um, he lived with in this village, and in particular for the farmers. Um, he focuses on the misery of the farmers' conditions, the, their pessimistic and, and fatalistic worldview, their stubbornness, their eternal patience, they are living untouched by history, history's grand schemes, and uh, they are living um, uncared for by the state, in fact uncared for by anybody. These farmers lived in one-room houses uh, with their animals in the same room under their bed and their infants hanging over their bed in cribs. Um, it's, in, it's a world where uh, people, animals and imagination were almost one thing, nothing was too complicated uh, including death itself. And finally I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the uh, social and political um, aspects. Levy uh, really keeps going on and hammering on uh, the uh, you know the state of status of good people of these uh, farmers being exploited by people with power and money. Um, it's all good um, although sometimes uh, uh, Levy might come across as a little too idealistic uh, theoretical, especially in his political reflections that are articulated in particular at the end of the book. Or perhaps he wasn't naive at all, he was just painting himself as the man who loved the humble and defenseless people uh, since by the time he wrote this book he had already joined the Italian Communist Party and he was later elected in the Senate. So knowing that there was his fate, um, it might be that he was already building a base or preparing his uh, uh, background uh, for his future political career. But my bet is, uh, uh, given his background, that he was a rather um, idealistic man to start with. Now what I really thought um, I saw in this book, I have to admit, was a privileged member of the Italian society of the 30s, because Levi's family was actually really wealthy. Uh, he was a good man, a well-educated man with an artistic sensitivity, who spent three years as a revered Kind of smartest guy in the village uh, doing nothing but painting and reading in sunny southern Italy. I know it's an unfair portrait but uh, and I don't want to sound flippant at all but uh, um, you know it makes me say how's that for an alternative to prison? You know where, where do I sign up almost? But uh, seriously um, Levy's book is perhaps uh, the only autobiographical book I've read where the author doesn't talk much about himself at all and sure, there was a wise approach for a young politician because as a young politician you never want your enemies to have too many personal details about you or background, but also in a certain sense a breath of fresh air uh, because it's not all me, 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 basically. So uh, this is recommended for readers who want to immerse themselves in the silence of a primitive ancient reality that is light years from our crazy, hyper-stressed, neurotic lives of today. Uh, but at the same time, it feels more deeply authentic. Uh, for those farmers, and I guess for most farmers, life has always been uh, stripped bare to the bone. Uh, this kind of white bone that we, uh, 21st century, soft and, and plump Westerners, very often forget. So this is a, a hardcore experience 
to live through the eyes of an artistic outsider. Thank you for uh, watching and please um, do comment and uh, share your, opi your opinions, uh, even share your questions. If I can, I will, very, I, be, I will be very happy to answer. And thanks again for watching.